rolling into Mistfire. Nice double diamond tech trail. Starts in the Garbanzo area of Whistler up top and runs into Creekside. It's rated a double diamond, which you saw on the sign there, but it's on the easier side of double diamonds. I'll say that. There's nothing uh, extreme, extreme on this one. But it's pretty tech. Just a lot of long, rugged tech. No big crazy features, but some of these sections get kind of steep and rugged, I will say that. So yeah, you know, you should be a legit double diamond rider before you head this way. But, said, it's not gonna be one of the ones that's really going to make your butt pucker. You could also think of it, I guess, as a very gnarly single diamond. Yeah. All right, this little section right here. Came on clip there. All right, that little section right there and where I'm at right now is pretty gnarly when it's wet. It's real slippery through there. You can just hear my front wheel there pointing off all kinds of stuff and I shut my mouth to see if maybe I had a flat tire or I was losing air, but I think I'm good. Don't hear anything at the moment. Don't feel anything out of the ordinary, so yeah. As I'm riding here, I'm trying to think about what my favorite part of this whole trail is. And I'm just like, you know, I really love the whole damn trail. I don't have a favorite part. I like it because it's got the kind of rugged and not so blown out feeling that you get on a lot of the trails in Whistler, particularly going down in the Fitzsimmons area where you get on a lot of trails and it's like, they're just so wide because they've been ridden over and over for so many years. And this might get there someday, but for now, it's kind of got the rugged, authentic PNW feel to it. feeling really good today. Oh, yeah, right there, I wanted to be on the right side, but I forgot about that. Yeah, you know, you ever have one of those days where you've done a little bit of maintenance on it, fixed up all its problems, and it's just rolling super nice. I've got no rattles on my bike or anything that I'm noticing. Maybe the camera's picking some up, but nothing like that. Everything's working as it should. The chain of cassettes fresh. My suspension is fresh. The only thing that's really not fresh is my brake fluid. Probably bleed those in the next couple days, but pads overall are fresh and brakes for the most part feel good. Not perfect, just good, but good enough to where I can say my bike's feeling okay. Now this section down here is rugged as fuck. I have no clue what the best line through it is. And we'll keep rolling into delayed fuse. All right. Kind of hesitated to think about that for a second because I was checking the trail status on the Whistler app on the way up here on the lift. It said the blade fuse was closed. It's kind of like, all right, guess I'm not getting a 
full run from the top of the creek side down. I like doing the misfire, delayed fuse. Um, uh, BC's trail link up. Been working on my Strava time on that. I call it Endurance DH. You gotta have some pretty good endurance to full pull it. All the way down. All right. Now this section up here is a bitch. Heads up. Okay, sweet. Yeah, that section right there, it's pretty nasty. these long uh, a DH courses like this it's important to hey keep your position pretty well and keep your feet planted keep your weight over your feet sometimes I think to myself stay on your feet not on your hands um, that keeps your your arms fresh when you're doing it and then outside of like when you're on the actual bike training lower back training core training and I talked to a lot of people they're like oh I got a six-pack you know my core is strong but once I get in the gym uh, once I get in the gym a different story is told so just because you got a six-pack don't mean your core is strong a lot of lower ab work um, and by that I mean things like leg lifts as opposed to crunches and lower back work this is what keeps you stable on the bike and able to support your weight from your legs so that your arms stay nice and fresh for these long pulls. what I was thinking with that line right there. I wasn't thinking that was it. Okay, sweet. We can keep rolling into BC's trail. Right when we come in here, there's a hole. And I got a little, got to do a little nose, nose up over it. And don't get squirrely like I just did. more rugged tack and quite possibly the most rugged of the full pull we just did so far into here. I don't know if that's because it is indeed the most rugged or if that's because I'm getting tired from a long, long ride down. Oh, not the line I wanted to go in. I know some of you guys on YouTube are gonna be like, yeah, it's slowing you down, Corey. But uh, this stuff is legit. Rugged. 
And it's also not the steepest. You don't get a ton of momentum down here on BC's trail. So the key to speed is holding your speed when you got it. That's easier said than done. You got massive roots sucking it up as you're rolling. Right here, keep it left. Uh, you stay up on like this little rock. You go right, you're into the right line, you just lose a lot of speed and end up in a real crappy place. Rocky spine thing, the jig. the last feature on BC's trail. See, I'm near at the bottom. I'm gonna keep pulling here. Not into Earth Circus, but up to the right is BCC. This is a fun blue tech trail. It's nice to feel this trail. You've been bouncing down that long, wicked descent. It feels almost smooth. You could take Earth Circus down, but gosh, Earth Circus might be my least favorite trail in the whole bike park. It's just a bunch of berms that on their own give you a headache mixed in with a lot of braking bumps. And we're going to be joining Earth Circus in a second for the final bit down and out. Yeah, here's Earth Circus. And uh, just a few switchbacks down. And you're at the bottom of Creekside. Creekside. 